Serious, what are some cryptid slash ghost slash unexplained stories you'd willing to share. One afternoon I was at work. I walked past a room with a window in the door and automatically glanced in the window. There was a woman standing in the room. Except there are only three people in the building and the other two were in the office behind me. I took a couple steps, realized what I had just seen, and backed up quickly but by the time I got back to the window the room was empty. There was only one door and when I opened it the room was empty. At the same building, a co-worker was telling me that she was in the office right around the corner from that same room. She couldn't see the door but she could see the shadow of the door on the floor as it slowly opened and closed. She was the only one in the building at the time and she refused to check. I arrived about an hour later and she asked me to check the door and it was still locked. I worked there about three years and every single one of us had stories. We heard voices in empty rooms. Once we were sitting in the office and we heard somebody breathing in an empty corner. It was common to be in one of the rooms and think somebody had just walked into the room, only to look up and find that the room was empty except for you. I had one manager who scoffed at all of our stories. She did not believe us when we told her there was something fairly benign but creepy in the building. We were sitting in the office, she scoffed and loudly said if there's anything in here prove it. We all held our breath, kind of a nervous, a bit scared but also curious. And just about the time my manager was getting that look on her face that said ha told you so something was thrown out in the hallway. It took us several minutes to work up the courage before going to check and finding that a book that normally sat on a bookshelf near the front door had somehow gone from that bookshelf around the corner and halfway down the hallway. The manager never talked about it and quit shortly after that. I've since quit also, but last I heard they were still hearing voices and seeing shadows in the building. When I was 7 years old. My grandma was in the hospital dying. At the time my family was strapped for cash and my mom was pregnant, so only my dad went to California, where she lived, to see her before she died. The day that she died, we got a phone call from her with her wanting to talk to each of us saying how much she loved us. A few hours later, we got a call from family members saying that she had passed away. When we told them that we had just received a call from her a few hours prior, everybody was in disbelief saying that she had been laying unconscious in the hospital bed all day and she could have never called yet alone been able to articulate her thoughts to us to this day we have no idea how she called us and i don't think we ever will i grew up in an old house and my family definitely experienced events that were hard to explain besides all the usual noises and occasionally hearing your name being spoken here's the top two weirdest things my brother and i were teens eating dinner in the kitchen there was a glass of water on the counter we heard a noise where the glass was and both looked toward it and we swore we saw it move an inch. As we were still looking and discussing it, the glass flew several feet across the counter and smashed onto the floor. Once when I was in college and I was home for holidays, I was in the kitchen getting food prepared. I was home alone at that point and my brother was due home at any moment. I heard the front door open and close. I called out hello to my brother and heard nothing back. Then I saw a shadow pass by the kitchen into the hallway and I assumed my brother was being rude so I followed and kept calling hello. I saw the shadow again turning another corner toward my brother's bedroom. I saw my brother's door closing. At this point I was calling out about what a jerk he was because we hadn't seen each other in months. I pushed the bedroom door open and uttered some insults, ha, and the room, as well as the whole house was empty. That was super chilling. I really had seen someone moving through the house. Flash forward 15 years later and when my husband and I bought an oldish house, built in 1870, I was up in the third floor arranging boxes and I heard a very clear and very polite women's voice say, well, hello there, never saw or heard anything in this house since. Do UFO stories count? Fayette County, Tennessee. I can't remember exactly when, but it was after Cobain died and before I changed schools, so either spring of 94 or during the 94 to 95 school year, a yellow-orange, football-shaped UFO was over a field across the road from my house. I watched it from my bedroom window while on the phone with a buddy. He used his mom's line, pre-cell phone days lol, to call the local little airport, but they said there were no helicopters or anything weird on radar. After a while, it headed east towards Somerville and I couldn't see it anymore. The next day at school, a bunch of other kids had either seen it or their uncle did, or whoever, seriously, 
I would love it if anyone from that area remembers this. My dad told me this one. One day, when my dad was at home alone, he was going to eat one more thing before showering. He got some mule lamb, food in Filipino, because my dad is Filipino, and began eating. Then, there was a blackout. So he got a candle and continued eating. He saw something white to his right. He looked to his right and saw nothing. He continued eating, but it was still there. He got a bit nervous and began eating faster. It was still there. He ate even faster. When my dad finished, he quickly put the bowl in the sink, and looked in the mirror. He then noticed there was a piece of rice stuck next to his eye. I shared this on Reddit a couple of times, I'll make it short this time. Six or so years ago weird SHT started happening in my mother's apartment. I lived there alone, she was lived with her BF but kept the apartment anyway. The door to my bedroom would open or close on its own. At some point in the night, it would close, or open at random intervals. With the door handle moving and all that. And not like slowly, sometimes it would full on slam shut or open. I tried everything, closing all the windows to see if maybe it was the wind, nope. Seeing if there was anyone else in the room, never found anybody, plus the room on the other side was empty except for a wardrobe, hell. It even happened more than a few times in front of a friend. The friend in question also told me my lamp started to switch on and off when I was sleeping. Not like in the movies where the lamp malfunctions, she said it was like it was turning on, then off, then on, etc. Toward the end of this, the sofa that was right beside the door moved by itself while I was on it, in the middle of the night, while I was on Skype on camera. The door kept opening and closing a few times a night for a few days then it stopped. Also I kept having sleep paralysis with visual and auditory hallucination at the time lol, I honestly could have thought I was simply going crazy, but I had eyewitnesses, never understood what happened this week. Never happened again. Couple years ago our TV started behaving really weirdly. It started with just pausing, fast forwarding and rewinding what we were watching, flicking through channels or changing the volume by itself. Then it gradually stepped up to putting horror movies on and entering the pin normally required for films rated above PG by itself. We changed the pin and then we would see the pin being typed incorrectly three times. Then it started flashing random pictures on the screen, one it did a lot was cat's eyes, don't remember the rest. Have no idea how it got access to the pictures either, I doubt these random pictures would be stored anywhere in the TV. We called out the TV company multiple times and they thought we were crazy until they came out and saw it for themselves. No one could figure out what it was, they kept recording what it was doing and sending it around and nobody knew what was causing it or how to fix it. In the end we had to get a new box, not had anything like that happen since and still have no clue what caused it but it was terrifying at the time. There was a really weird occurrence at my dad's house a few years ago. He awoke to the sound of dogs barking and realized the neighborhood dogs were barking at something that was moving parallel to the road. When his own started to bark he went outside to see what was up. Across the street is pretty much all forest except a church directly across the street that at the time was just a gravel lot. My dad was too far away to see anything but in the dead of night, he could definitely hear the sound of someone running at full tilt across the gravel. A few things freaked him out from this. 1. Whatever it was definitely ran on two feet, try having a dog run on gravel versus a human and you can tell the difference. And it was big. Both myself and he have witnessed large animals like bears and moose running through the underbrush and according to him, it sounded like it was of a similar size to those creatures. 2. It was easily running somewhere around 40 to 50 miles per hour in the clearing of the lot then slowed down again as it went back into the woods. He was able to compare the speed because the road itself is 45 miles per hour limit so it was going just as fast as a passing car. 3. The final thing. Its huffing and gasping was so loud he could hear it from his front door and was obviously not human. We looked online later to compare its sound to other animals and it really didn't sound like anything he'd ever heard before. The freakiest part was the almost synchronous reactions the dogs had. He's never heard dogs react like that before. Both him, my stepmom, my stepbrother, and several of our neighbors all can account for hearing the strange barking from the dogs, but it was only my dad who heard what they were after. Nothing happened like that since and I've never personally witnessed anything like it. We do like right on the border of the Cascade mountain range and are surrounded by park and federal land if you want to get an idea of where this took place. 
One night I was watching The Conjuring at home with my little sister when we heard someone putting a key into our front door and opening it. We were sitting in the living room next to a sliding door that was very close to the front door so we both heard it very clearly. Now this didn't alarm us since we knew our dad had recently gone out to get some stuff, so we just assumed he had returned. Dad, you're back already? I casually asked. There was no response. Dad? I asked again, thinking that he had not heard me the first time. Again. Silence. At this point I get the feeling that something isn't quite right and I could tell by the look on my sister's face that she was quite nervous as well. I'll note that up to this point she had spent the evening rolling her eyes at horror movie cliches and she very rarely gets scared. We looked at each other for a moment wondering what we should do before we started hearing a few more scattering sounds from right outside the sliding door. I was frozen in fear by this stage. I tried one more time in a louder, but shakier voice, Dad, is that you? Please respond, please respond. Repeated in my head. But the silence continued, now at this point I'm freaking out and I literally jumped off the couch. My sister also abruptly gets up and starts rapidly walking towards the other end of the room which leads to the kitchen area. She later revealed to me that she was planning on grabbing a knife. She had this horrified look on her face that I hadn't seen before. We looked at each other in nervous silence. I didn't really know what to do and I didn't want to make any further sounds. I finally decided to walk up to the sliding door and began opening it as slowly as possible, peering into the darkness, I know, I literally became the idiot who investigates the unknown, creepy noise without anything to protect myself with. When the door was finally open wide enough, I poked my head out and scanned the corridor, preparing for the worst. To my surprise, there was no one there. But what was more strange was that the front door was still completely shut. We never heard the door close. My sister and I were obviously both extremely relieved as we were almost certain that there was an intruder in the house. After this, I immediately went to go ask my mom, who was situated in her bedroom at the other end of her house, if it was her or whether she had noticed anything. She told me that she thought my dad had come home as well as she also heard someone opening the front door. Around half an hour later which felt like an eternity at the time as we still quite shaken from the incident. My dad finally arrived home and confirmed that he had not come home earlier. To this day my sister and I still have no idea what happened that night. This isn't a story involving me. It was actually when my mom was a little kid, so I've only heard this story from my grandma, who likes to tell me things like these when I visit her. My grandma was traveling with my mom and her three younger siblings, one of them was a baby and the others were toddlers or just young kids. Of course, handling three hyper kids and one baby on an airplane isn't that fun, and my grandma was beyond exhausted by the time they took their seats. My grandma chose a back row on the flight, sitting with the two youngest while my mom sat in the other row with her sister. Things quieted down for a bit when they took off, but as time went on my mom and her siblings grew more restless. Lots of whining, complaining, and crying that made my grandma wish she could just sleep and forget it all. Just as my grandma is about to lose it, a man sitting behind her taps her shoulder, and my grandma turns to look at him. He frowns, noticing how tired she is, and asks if she'd like help calming down her crazy kids. Of course, my grandma is so done that she quickly agrees. Side note, nowadays I don't think people would be so quick to hand over their babies, but this was back when strangers were a lot more chill with each other so I guess that explains that. My grandma quietly reads, a wave of relief washing over her as the man hands my mom and her sister's coloring books and quiets down the baby by dangling an interesting toy over the seat, and for the rest of the plane ride, everything was quiet. My grandma says it was the most quiet she'd ever had since my mom was born. The plane lands. My grandma thanks the man and starts getting my mom and her siblings ready to get off the plane. Of course, she's really excited to introduce this man she befriended on the flight to my grandpa and tell him how he saved her from a hell of a flight. My grandma gets off the plane with everyone and meets up with my grandpa. She proceeds to excitedly tell him all the details, and that he should wait with them to meet the man. After all, the man was behind them and would be one of the last ones to get off the plane. They were both in back rows, 10 minutes went by. Then 15. They had been watching people get off the whole time but the man never showed. My grandma was incredibly puzzled by this. How could he have possibly disappeared when they were sitting in front of him and had gotten off the plane before him? My grandma, worried that something happened to him, stopped one of the crew members who had a list of all the people on the flight. She asked for his name, which she had learned on the flight, only to be given this response. Sorry, 
ma'am, there's no, man's name, on this list, to this day, no one knows quite for sure who this man really was or where he could have gone. My grandma and I think that he was some sort of guardian angel or spirit sent to help her in a time of need. Unexplained story here. So I was walking home from college one afternoon. It's about a two mile walk between home and college. I'm on the outskirts of the town center and entering a busy neighborhood and everything seems normal until I start getting a creepy feeling, like I was being watched or something. So I look around and what do I find? Literally every person looking at me and watching me as I go past them, even the people driving were looking at me as they went past. Like, there was this one guy, who was turning the corner to come onto the road I was about to cross, and he was legit leaning over in his seat, staring at me as he drive around this corner. Happened for the entire way home but hasn't happened since. Was super freaked out. Didn't tell my family or friends cause they would think I'm crazy, and y'all out there saying this world ain't a simulation. I got home from school one day and decided to play a game on my computer. During intermission in the game, I would talk in a group chat with a couple of my friends. We were telling jokes and making each other laugh until I needed to use the restroom. I told them I would be right back and left my phone on the desk and didn't turn it off. When I returned, I noticed that some of the letters were being pressed even though no one was in the room with me. It wasn't a word that was typed, but random letters with the it symbol spacing them out. To me. It didn't mean anything so I asked my friends if they thought it meant something, but they were startled by it and didn't know what it meant either. I thought it was strange, but decided to ignore it. Later that night when I decided to go to bed, I turned off my lamp and got under the sheets. My cat, Portia, was by me sound asleep. A few moments later, I heard what sounded like footsteps slowly creeping through the hallway into my bedroom. Suddenly, they stopped right outside my doorway. I glanced up and expected to see my brother, but no one was in sight. From her dead sleep, Portia bolted up, stood at the end of my bed and stared into the hallway. I was confused since she had never done that before. I tried to get her back to her normal spot on my bed, but she wouldn't budge. I even put my hand in front of her face, but she kept trying to peer over it. She eventually sat back down and went to bed. Since then. I haven't had any other experiences like that and I still wonder if there was something trying to contact me that night. I chose a stall next to a stall that was used by someone with brown leather shoes. I had no toilet paper so after some time I asked the guy next to me if he can send me a few. He moved his foot and handed it. His hand looked weirdly pale blue and was cold to the touch. I took the tissues and finished up and left the stall quickly. I was shocked to see that the stall next to me was empty. All that was there was a pair of brown leather shoes. I swear I have no explanation. I still think it was just a prank or something but I just don't know how. It was a rainy winter morning. My father and I were pulling out of the driveway headed to school. We both saw a glimpse of a girl in a white dress, barefoot, blonde, maybe five years old run around the corner of our home and out of sight. We both looked at each other and acknowledged that we witnessed the same thing. He got out of the car and ran around the house to look for her. When he came back he said he couldn't find anyone but called my mom to let her know that a little kid might be running around the yard. We thought it was weird but not much was said of it. And there weren't any missing kids in the area. A few months later we were remodeling our basement and found a photo album hidden behind the drywall. It was full of photos of a little girl with blonde hair and a white dress. The photo album was from 1922. The family that originally lived in the house died of DB. When I was younger, I lived in this house in upstate New York and if you got up in the middle of the night to use the toilet, as you went to sit down on it, the toilet seat would flip up and you'd fall into the water. Astronaut Deke Slayton's red race plane was seen flying at John Wayne Airport during curfew, where aircraft were not allowed to take off before 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. depending on the day, thanks a lot people who make noise complaints, grrrr. The airport's officials sent a letter about the noise to Deke's home and it was received by his very confused widow. Apparently, Deke had died many hours ago, and his race plane had been in a museum for years. This article has more details about the incident, as well as some others. I don't really believe in the paranormal. In fact, I don't really believe it at all. 
but I do have a few stories that stick with me that are unexplainable to my brain even years later with a more adult and reasonable thought process. The first that comes to mind is one I always tell my friends that gives me chills and freaks me out and will always make me feel some type of way for the foreseeable future. I was probably 9 or 10 at the time and my dad was in the military. We were stationed in Fort Knox and lived on base in a provided military apartment. I moved around a lot growing up and have plenty of superstitious family members. So at the time of being a child the fear of the supernatural always existed. I lived pretty normally and then I made a friend named Dylan, hope he is doing well these days. One day, after school, his mom invited me over to their home, they also lived on base. Right away, entering that apartment, I felt very uneasy or like someone was watching me. However, as the day went by I played with him and his little sister and things were normal, nothing amiss and so on his birthday I returned to his home for the final time. When I came through the door again I got that uneasy feeling. This time I asked him about it and his demeanor changed as well as his little sister's. He didn't really want to talk about it. Being young I found that to be a bit strange, as the his birthday went on I found myself needing to use the bathroom. There were two bathrooms one upstairs and one downstairs. I went to enter the bathroom downstairs and without a missed breath him and his sister both say, we don't use that bathroom, don't go in there. I didn't really think much of it until he asked if I would stand outside the door of the upstairs bathroom while he used it. Things now seemed off and that uneasy feeling sank in. I complied, we went upstairs he went to pee and left the door wide open and asked me not to let anyone shut it. Which freaked me out because it was just me and him upstairs. I was dying to piss and asked if he would stand outside because now I was nervous. To which he refused. Angry that he didn't return the favor I stormed off downstairs yanked the bathroom door open and meant to take a piss, kind of funny and it gets a little funnier and terrifying, 10 years old, pants halfway down I am about ready to piss when the lights go off, the switch is inside as well as the lock. Which frightens me because now I can't see and I have my pants down. Then it flicks back on and then off again and then it begins happening a lot more rapidly. What gives me chills, is that to this day I distinctly remember seeing the light switch flip itself up and down on its own. This picks up, now a terrified 9 or 10 year old, I begin to panic and try to open the door. I got the door open at about a head's width and it slammed on me really hard. Lights are still flickering. I open it again and go to step out and it slams on me even harder. Now crying for his mom or anyone, because the lights are flickering and the door is slamming on me. His mom hears me plea and is yanking on the door to which I am pushing. Finally, the door flung open and both her and I went falling forward at the force. I cried and went home. It really ruined me being friends with Dylan and we never talked about it. I remember later my mom asked if I remembered that story and told me his mother called and apologized. She also proceeded to tell my mom further that her and her husband had been experiencing a lot of things in the apartment. One being that she would wake up in the night to something raising the covers off of her husband and whispering his name. I don't believe in ghosts but that is one of the most terrifying and unexplainable portions of my childhood. And experience unlike any other. My grandma passed days, old age, ago her favorite animal was moth since she passed every night I have seen this huge hummingbird looking moth around my porch. It probably is just just a moth. But I feel like it's her saying she is okay. Uck, I made a throwaway to post this because people know my main and it's kind of embarrassing and I've only told my partner because I'm definitely the type who rolls my eyes at ghost stories and holds firm on the stance that I don't believe in ghosts. And yet. I have two brothers and we all lived in a small house when I was about 8 to 11 years old. All of us kids hated the downstairs, it was always chilly, which is normal for a basement, but it felt like a creepy chilly. Sounds lame, I know, but my little brother, probably six when we first had that house, had a room downstairs and hated it. Would go so far as to not sleep in his room because he was so frightened. He wouldn't even enter the basement bathroom. He always had awful nightmares in that house, and so did I. All of us kids still refer to it as the haunted house, it sounds stupid to type, but it just truly had a bad feeling to it. Anyways, the incident, I was about 11 and downstairs alone. There was like a 45 minute gap between getting off school and when my mom got home, and my brothers weren't there, must have been with my dad? Can't quite remember. So I was on the computer, which was in the basement, and to my left is the staircase heading up and my cat was sitting on the landing between the first set of stairs and the second. It's also only about 4pm, so it was light out and I had no music playing, 
so there was nothing to confuse me. This next part will probably sound minor and not freaky, but I get chills thinking of it, suddenly, I hear hi 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 starting as a whisper and getting progressively louder and circling the room, as though someone was running around. I might have chalked it up to me hearing something I guess, except when the high got to the staircase, directly to my left, my cat arched her back and hissed loudly, I bolted upstairs, my cat following me, and never went down solo again until we moved into our next house. About a decade ago, I was visiting a graveyard to pay my respects, this was back in my family's home country. I was feeling absolutely fine throughout the day, but come time to leave the graveyard, I suddenly felt like I couldn't walk by myself. My shoulders were extremely heavy, my body was drained, and my legs felt like they were being anchored down by weights, more specifically, hands. It was as if I had multiple hands grabbing me by the ankles, so I couldn't keep walking. I actually felt quite panicked, so I told the family member I was with that I'm literally feeling like my life forces, for lack of better translation, are being sucked out of me, to which they nonchalantly replied, well, they probably want your young, lively spirit. In the end, I had to be carried out of the premises. I work graveyard shift security, and the shadows don't act right, the human shadows where they shouldn't be are one thing, but I can dismiss them, even when I'm inside an unlit room illuminated by light that just reflects it and casts none, what gets me is when I'm inside and pacing around between patrols sometimes I see something pacing with me from the corner of my eye, it's on four legs but its gait is messed up, like it is human hips and shoulders but its four legs are as long as its hind legs. It's got a build like you took a dog and stretched its limbs out. Then flattened and elongated its abdomen. Its head is oversized like the head of a huge boar on the body of a tall but thin dog. Like the silhouettes it's just a shadow and I only see it out of the corner of my eye and when I've just been light blinded. You know how when you look at a bright light then away it leaves an after image of the light source's shape? Instead of that I'll see the shadow thing. It's not always following me when I see it. But mostly it's inside and I leave when I see it. The idea I have of what it looks like comes from many brief glimpses over a couple years. The worst part is the way it moves. With the body style I described but like the music video for Schism at 3, 17 inches anyway brains are weird huh? My freshman year of college I stayed on the top floor of my residence hall. Everything was normal until about mid-November when my roommate and I would hear what sounded like someone messing with our doorknob and lock, but when we looked out the peephole no one was there. It was weird but we brushed it off, but one night while I was in my dorm room alone, of course, I was studying for finals when the lights flickered, I heard a loud bang down the hall and my roommate's TV turned on by itself. Turns out a girl who lived in the door many years ago jumped from the top floor and the legend goes that every year around the anniversary of her suicide she goes around and messes with the residents. Sounds silly but the SHT was crazy. When I was a baby, I had a bunch of stuffed animals in a net on a wall corner in my room, visible from my crib. One night, after I had been put to bed, my mom and grandma heard me giggling on the baby monitor while they had been sitting together in the kitchen, they went up to check, as that was odd. I should have been asleep by then. They entered my room found all of my stuffed animals neatly lined up in front of my crib, with the net still intact, my mom, grandma and I were the only ones home. A couple of years ago my wife and I chartered a boat out of Key West to do some snorkeling and sandbar. Sandbarring? Whatever. So we were 6 miles west of Key West in about 3 feet of water shelling and picking up sand dollars. It's just me and my wife in the water and the boat captain for miles as far as we can see, maybe 50 yards off to one side of us I notice a hard shadow moving slowly through the water. I watch it for maybe 30 to 45 seconds and it stops moving. I keep looking and a head pops up and is looking at me. It's far enough away that I can't make out details but it's a blue and orange humanoid head. We stare at each other for what feels like a minute but is probably 5 to 10 seconds. The head drops back underwater and the shadow takes off underwater at unimaginable speed. Neither my wife or the captain saw it. Or if they did they didn't mention it. I didn't say anything to them about it. I never felt threatened. My distinct memory when face to face with whatever it was is actually thinking nobody is ever going to believe this. At my old middle school, I would have volleyball practice twice a week in the evenings. My sisters, two years older and five years older, 
did the same thing at my age. I remember going to return the volleyballs upstairs for my coach one night into her classroom which was two stories above the gym. I made it up the stairs and saw the door for the class across the hallway start to slowly open at a really bright light and smoke or something slowly drifting out, almost dancing. I booked it downstairs and waited a little bit until my coach could walk up with me. The door was shut like nothing happened. About 8 or so years later, I was talking with my sister, 2 years older than me, about what I saw and I was half expecting her to think I was being crazy. I go into detail, telling her what it looked like, which classroom and door and everything. She wasn't responding to me so I looked over at her for the first time in a couple minutes and she was crying. She told me she saw the exact same thing too and couldn't go back upstairs alone ever again. She was relieved to finally find out that she wasn't making it up in her head or being crazy. We thought of all the possibilities of what it could be. Custodians cleaning with the lights on and maybe smoking? But nope, it was too bright for any normal lights in there and way too dark outside for it to be shining through any window. Plus the custodians would always clean after school and before our practices. School was done by 2.30 and practice was always 6.30 to 8.30. We've heard many other stories from other kids at the school who had after school activities and would see slash hear weird shit. Still creeps us both out to this day. When I was young, mid 80s, I had a boombox and used to record radio shows on FM stations onto cassette tapes. I would hit record and let it run for 60 minutes and play with my toys or whatever. One time, while listening back to a show, there was a 20 seconds interruption in the recording. It sounded demonic. It was a low guttural growl and it scared the SHD out of me. I played it for my mom and she made me throw the tape away. Never really thought about it for years until I watched the Michael Keaton movie about ghosts and analog tapes. I don't really know about ghosts and all that, but the house we lived in definitely had a negative energy. I would sleepwalk and have terrible nightmares there. Crazy stuff. English isn't my first language but here, so it was like 8pm and I was in my room playing games and listening to music. I thought heard my mom yell at me to stop banging the wall. I ignored it I thought it was just the music messing with my hearing do I continued playing. This time my mom's yells at me to stop because it's gonna wake my baby brother up I was still confused so I went to my mom to ask and I told her it wasn't me. The thing is my mother thought I was in my sister's room. I'm not a creep she is one of those soft beds but there is only a bed there and I was in my in my room and my stepdad was with my mom so there was nothing that could really bang the walls. Ghosts have always gravitated towards me. I used to live in an apartment that was redone because of a fire and someone died because of it. I had no clue that the apartment I lived in had the death. I happened to choose the room where the woman passed. The whole time I lived there I'd get shaken awake at 7.30 every weekday morning. I'd look and see no one, go back to sleep and immediately get shaken again. Look. And again see no one. Try to sleep again. Get shaken even harder. I'd get up and go to the couch. At 8 am I'd get shaken again. Go back to my bed to go back to sleep. I worked nights as a dishwasher so 7.30 and 8 was too early for me. When my girlfriend moved in with me that's when I realized it was a woman who died in my room when the fire happened. Because after my girlfriend moved in I'd still get shaken awake every weekday morning at 7.30 and 8 o'clock. But my girlfriend wouldn't. Women get changed together all the time so having my girlfriend in the room was fine to this ghost, but not me, and 30 minutes is just enough time for a woman to get ready for work after her shower. We figured she liked us because we'd start to hear a disembodied laugh every now and then. Not a bad laugh, a genuine that's funny laugh. It spooked everyone who heard it at first, but we got used to it after a while. Then one day my girlfriend invited my ex-girlfriend over. No biggie, they were friends. My ex and I agreed after a troubled relationship that we're better friends. That female ghost hated my ex. The room would get cold whenever my ex came by and she'd hear angered growls. Just my ex. One night when they were getting ready to head out to the bar, my ex took a shower at the apartment because it was better than hers. She comes out of the bathroom wide as a ghost and scared. Didn't you hear me yell? She asked us. I thought you guys were messing with the light in the bathroom. It kept going on and off. I could hear the switch. Then the water goes ice cold and I could see the outline of a hand go past the shower head. No, not a word came from the bathroom. I guess the ghost doesn't like you, said my girlfriend said. You did not say anything about a ghost here. My ex said sternly. How can you live like this? Oh, she loves us. We make her laugh, I said. Really? 
All I hear are growls when I'm here. Explains why it gets cold when you come by. My girlfriend said. I thought you had no heat. Heat bills paid. It only happens when you're here. I said. Fine. I won't come by anymore. She clearly hate me. My ex said. She never went back to the apartment. After that it went back to normal. Every weekday I'd get shaken awake at 7.30 and 8 o'clock. The disembodied laugh came back. Then a year later we moved out. I'm fairly certain the ghost came with us because my roommate who lived with us said it was too quiet and the apartment door stopped opening and closing on its own at 8 o'clock on weekdays. I had no clue about the door to the hall until he said that. One day I was with my brother and we both walked out our house and started walking down the street at about 11 to 12 pm. All of a sudden about 5 meters away from us, a woman in a white dress just straight up walked into the wall and disappeared. I had no clue to where she came from, and I didn't recognize who she was. I couldn't see her face as we saw her from her side profile but she had dark, long black hair. I was frozen still for about 2 to 3 seconds and then turned to my brother to ask him he just saw that. I looked over at him and he was also frozen and replied with a yeah. We both just walked immediately back into her house and decided not to go out that night. Apparently, a few other people on my street have seen something similar but for me it was only that one time. I've seen Sasquatch. Before anyone asks, it was in Rhode Island. I didn't seriously believe in Sasquatch before I saw one. When I was a kid, I'd read about Bigfoot and think how cool it would be. But I never really bought into it. I was walking in the woods in February 2018 and I saw some big bipedal creature walking through the river. I'd say it was between 6 and 7 feet tall, so I split the difference and say 6 feet 6 inches. I stopped to stare, so I didn't take my phone out to record. Even if I did, my camera quality is absolute dog shit. Let me stress this, it was not a bear. Its arm swung when it walked. The gait was practically identical to the Patterson-Gimlin footage. Since then, I've gone into the woods hundreds of times, with others and alone. One of my friends believes he's also seen Sasquatch in those woods. I think there are at least three of them. In all the time I've spent in those woods, I've never had a sighting as clear as that first one. I've had a few quick glances here and there, but I haven't had a good luck. If anyone's interested, I have a document recording sightings and other incidents. I know it's hard to believe. And it's even harder believe being in Rhode Island, but I swear I wholeheartedly believe there is a big humanoid running around in the area. They're mostly peaceful. I think there are many species like Sasquatch spread worldwide. There's the Yeti, the Yowie, the Yaren, the Alamas, etc. I firmly believe they're out there. I will say, I don't believe in the typical Yeti. I'm 90% sure the abominable snowman is just misidentified animals. I think I remember Yeti being explained as an extinct bear species. Maybe it's due to the fact I was a kid, but I got used living alone while my siblings and my parents were busy with work or school. However, one day while I was waiting to go to school, Brazil you either studied just on the morning or in the afternoons, I had a chill, like, I felt really cold on a normal summer day and had goosebumps, and I felt like there were eyes watching me inside the apartment. I screamed asking if there was anyone around then walked around the house, trying to find anyone and getting increasingly freaked out. Then, I grabbed several brooms to defend myself just in case and I was still feeling cold. At last, it was time for me to go to school so I just fled, praying that my mother wouldn't feel weirded out why there were brooms in the middle of the corridor. My memory is not the greatest, but around that time there was a neighbor in the 14th floor that committed suicide by jumping through the window. I live on the 3rd floor and soon enough, on the next day, when I used the elevator it went to the 14th floor. Well, this time I just thought it was a huge coincidence. This is from the time I was 13, I remember it clearly because it happened the day I found my cat. That day I returned home kinda early from school, because I used to return walking but that day I took the bus. So, nobody was at home at that hour except of me. I was eating something before taking a nap and the phone started ringing, I answered the call but there wasn't any sound in the other side. I hung up and was about to go when it started ringing again. I answered and nothing so I hung up again. That happened many times in a period of 20 to 25 minutes. The phone started ringing for the 10th time, I think, and I was angry at that point because I thought someone was making a prank, but no. This time when I answered there was someone, and that someone was crying, and in the background there was a very creepy and, believe me, 
inhuman laugh. It sounded metallic. Just after I asked how can I help you? I heard that the person who was crying started to shout something that wasn't in my language. Then it stopped, then I heard the laugh sounded closer and at that point I was super scared and just hung up the phone in shock. It was a minute later I realized that maybe I had witnessed a crime or something similar, so I started checking the call record to tell the police what number was the one calling. It was empty, no calls that day. I was astonished. Then I called the police and informed about it. They called me hours later very angry telling me that they contacted the phone company and there wasn't any call to my phone at the hour I pointed this thing to have happened. Until today I don't know what the hell happened, like I'm trying to seek an explanation to this. I want to clarify something before I start. I was very young at the time and only have vague recollections of this house, but everyone in my wider family remembers it, so I'll give the few examples I remember and then family stories. My cousins had a holiday house somewhere in the north of the country that we all ubiquitously called the bog after the peat fields that surrounded the house, a list all known hauntings that were experienced there and and by who. My family, lights turning off and on by themselves in different rooms, strange footsteps along the corridor, my brother's nightlight that was powered by a battery would randomly turn itself off and on even when we changed the batteries and it worked perfectly fine at our house. Teddy's thrown around the playroom or hidden somewhere different to where I put them down. My mum experienced a situation at night where she heard the door open and little footsteps on the floor, so she opened the bed sheets as she thought it was me coming in for a snuggle and nothing was there. My grandmother. When she entered the house for the first time, she put her suitcase by the front door and went to grab her handbag. She walked in the house to find her suitcase missing. When she walked upstairs to the room she usually stays in, her suitcase was on her bed. She was annoyed, so loudly said now, I don't want any of this behavior, you understand? And never experienced any other paranormal situations. Cousins A. 1. Lights would randomly shut in the room you were in but not in any other room. 2. Foul smells would erupt randomly. 3. Items would go missing and turn up in places you would have never put them. Grandfather. 1. Went for a walk in the countryside one morning with his partner and came back to the house to find all the beds and two bedrooms flipped on their backs, frames facing the ceiling. Obviously, they went to check the house for animal entry and came back blank, there was no sign of any kind of forced entry within the house. He left later that day and swore he would never step foot in that damned house. However, the weirdest possible thing about this house? The cousins who owned it never saw anything and said nothing happened to them. They're also extremely wealthy and had the house completely gutted and remodeled before they even used it as a holiday home, so it had new electricity and plumbing. To this day it's the only paranormal experience my family and I have ever had, and while I am very skeptic about most paranormal activity, this is just unexplainable to us. I slept over at my grandparents' house one night and when I woke up in the morning and looked out the door I saw a woman with long red hair wearing a white nightgown walking by. Oh. It must be my grandma, I thought. I wasn't wearing my glasses and so I shut my eyes and pretended I was still asleep. Then it hit me with the jolt that my grandma had been wearing a pair of red flannel pajama pants and a red long sleeved shirt. Her hair is red, but it's short. I remember watching through my eyelashes as the figure looked at me and then turned, continuing down the hallway. I jumped out of bed and ran all the way to my grandma who was still wearing the same red flannels. There was no one else in the house but my grandpa who was still fast asleep. Pretty spooky. Posted this elsewhere but it never gained traction. This past July, I went for a tubing trip on the Sable River in northern Michigan with family. We went upriver to float down to our property abutting the river. This is in the middle of the Huron National Forest and a gorgeous river for fishing and swimming. My family and I loaded into a pickup truck and headed a few miles upriver to a small trail that leads down to the river. Unfortunately, my uncle nearly missed the turnoff and pulled in a foot off the trail of the drive and slashed the inside of a tire on a culvert. In total, it was myself, my aunt and uncle in their mid-sixties, my cousin and his two daughters. Sadly, no one brought a cell phone and the spare was rusted to the undercarriage of the truck bed. My aunt, who doesn't like to wait for a solution decided to hike back to the cabin immediately while we waited. I went with because my aunt shouldn't be the one to do this in the first place. The walk is along a state road a two-lane country highway with either a 55 or 45 miles per hour speed limit depending on how twisted the road is as it winds through the Huron. Both sides of this road are shrouded by tall white and red pines, occasional birches and the like. Very scenic, 
very lovely, yet very hot in the early afternoon of early July when one would rather be tubing down the river. We walked east up the westbound shoulder and vehicles would pass every few minutes. Typically, you could either hear a distant radio or music playing followed by the nearing rumble of a car or truck coming. Nothing out of the usual. However, as we walked we heard what sounded like classic rock music coming from the trees. It was coming closer and it truly sounded like an oncoming vehicle or someone moving on an ATV or bike except there was no sound of an engine or rumble of tires. I thought perhaps someone was just out of view in the tree line. There are no houses or cabins in this stretch of the road, nor trails or roads, it's pure forest. The sound came closer and I was trying to identify what song it was as it sounded somewhat familiar or so I thought. My aunt, lovely lady kept walking and busting ass without so much as a care in the world rather sure she was cursing my uncle repeatedly. Within the span of 30 seconds, the sound was nearly on top of us yet we couldn't see any source for the music. As it closed to within 30 feet of us, still off to our left in the forest, it should have been obvious. But it wasn't. And that's when the music became louder along with a bit of buzzing like static or flies. And then it was there, invisible. It was perhaps 5 feet from us and it had to be, I tell myself. A swarm of flies. Buzzing in unison and in differing octaves of the same notes definitely not classic rock music but oddly and incredibly musical. And the noise moved at a clip like the passing cars and trucks going 45 to 55 miles per hour. I was expecting to have to swat or run from a swarm but yet there was nothing there. No black dots swirling about, nothing landed or stung or bit us, and as quickly as it came upon us, it kept moving and passed by behind us, heading westward. And as it left our area. The audible buzzing diminished and its noise warped back into the sounds of classic rock music. Now, I'm aware we used to have a tent bug problem in northern Michigan. This year, Traverse City released scores of black flies to annihilate them, which they have in our neck of the woods. The only thing I can fathom is that it was a swarm of flies buzzing and flying in such a manner as to produce such a noise. However, I've not been able to Google foo any evidence such a thing can occur. We walked on and I stated to my aunt that was the oddest thing and she shrugged it off, agreeing but not caring. I was hydrated, not drunk, which is blasphemous this time of year in this location, or high, also blasphemy, and dismissed the occurrence as I'll figure it out later. First was when I was young my parents had this house on the lake and for some reason the upstairs really unnerved me. Even during the day being upstairs would make me nervous but at night it was almost unbearable like something angry was with you and you're waiting to get hit but you never do. It was worse when I was younger but eventually I moved to my bedroom when I was over it but it never really went away. I swore I would hear voices but somehow not with my ears. Like if someone called your name but I never heard it with my ears, I would just react to it. I also had nightmares in the house, recurring and looping with slightly changing each time. I always just thought it was my imagination until one night during one of those nightmares I physically felt something slap me hard enough to wake me up out of a dead dream sleep at exactly 3 am. I didn't sleep upstairs anymore after that. Later in my teenage years at the same house I had gotten home late after seeing a movie with some friends and when I walked past the stairs I distinctly heard a sound that was identical to the predator snarl. This noise, it stopped me dead in my tracks frozen in fear and I stood there for what seemed like an eternity waiting for something else to feel like I wasn't crazy but nothing else happened that night. In my very early 20s I worked at a Whataburger and people would joke all the time that the place was haunted cause things would move and they'd hear movement in the lobby after we closed, back when they closed the lobby, but I never believed them until I heard it. One day it was just me and my manager buddy working that night and he was in the office doing manager stuff when I was handing an order out the window and behind me I heard the distinct sound of boots walking across the sticky ass tiles from behind where the grills were then proceeding around behind the registers and then knocking on the office door. I know it wasn't just me cause my buddy opened the door to see what I needed and all he saw was me standing across the building looking back at him wide eyed. We reviewed the tapes and saw nothing. Never happen again after that. I also have been unnerved and offset in friends' homes and later learned that they've had strange experiences in those homes so I dk. I try not to think about it. There are a lot of ghost stories in my family. Since the simple ones tell those you stay quiet and look like what people here believe that bamboo is haunted and this story is about it. My grandpa was going home, by horse, when he saw a woman sit down a bamboo far away where he was, but he was going in her direction. How near he comes to her, taller she became. When he was really really close, she was huge and started to fall over him, 
The horse paralyzed, but he forced the animal to go and rush to his house. After entering his home and turning on the light he fainted. As I'm not a believer in ghosts, etc., I would put this under unexplained, but I know a few people I've told this story to who would say otherwise. At the time, I'm probably 16 to 17, and as such one of the older members of our Boy Scout troop. Our troop travels to upstate New York, Indian Lake. It's a state park with campsites that are on islands in a lake, the only way to access the campsites are by boat. The scoutmasters reserved enough campsites for the number of scouts and parents going, but when we arrive we realize that the sites are split on separate islands. In fact, one of the sites is all by itself. Myself and my two friends, being the elder scouts, decide we will take this site and have it to ourselves. The canoe trip from the main island to ours was probably a 30 to 60 minute canoe ride away. Adults stopped by in some motorized boats to drop off some food, but otherwise we had the site to ourselves. In fact, a quick five-minute walk around the island's empty campsites confirmed that we had the entire island to ourselves, no one was using the other sites located on the island. As night falls, we build a fire, make our burgers, eat our snacks and shoot the shit. I'm sitting at the picnic bench, when from the nearby trees comes a growling and barking. My buddy John is frozen, already someone who is afraid of dogs. Paul is the only one who can get a good look at it as it was obscured to my eyesight by our tent. He too is frozen, handling his flashlight like a weapon, but afraid to turn it on. For the longest 10 minutes of our life, the growling and barking continues. The sight lines and darkness made it difficult for us to identify what type of animal it was. Our guess was a dog as opposed to a wolf, but at no time did we hear its owners, and after all, we're on an island a 30 minute canoe ride from where anyone might be with a dog. Eventually, the animal left the sight. We stayed still for 15 minutes more, making sure it was gone. Being the youthful, scared idiots that we were, we retreated to the place where we felt safe, our tent. There we stood with our flashlights ready to beat anything that might attack. We planned on taking shifts staying awake in case it came back, but eventually all succumbed to sleep. With daylight upon us, we took a walk once again around the island, looking for any signs of the animal or any other campers that might have arrived later the previous night. We didn't find anything. I really enjoy reading people's real experiences, please try not to post fake stories, there's better subreddits for that stuff, I will start off with my own two shorts. I stayed the night at my friend's house, small one story three bedroom house in the boonies near the city limits, a few years back. I was around 18 at the time my friend he has two cats but they hardly ever are around. Anyways we were hanging out in his living room and it was 12 and he was tired so he went to pass out in his room and I stayed in the living room to sleep on the couch. I slept curled on the couch facing the whole room. I woke up to something jab me in the stomach hard and nearly knocked the wind out of me. The cats were immediately at the corner of the rooms hissing at me. Their eyes followed something out of the room that I couldn't see. Another time I woke up at my mother's house funny enough it was in her living room as well and she had kid toys for my nephew when he came over. And they woke me up because two of them were going off and nothing was there to set them off I ran out of the room so fast it was ridiculous but thought I was over exaggerating so I didn't run all the way into my mom's room I just waited in the hallway, not wanting to make a scene. Anyways I ended up bringing myself to go back and sleep, nothing happened until I was almost asleep and I opened my eyes and I could swear one of the toys moved closer to me, could have been my imagination. I pulled the blanket over my head and eventually passed out terrified of course. These stories could probably be debunked fairly easily but they are only a couple of the many odd experiences life has brought me lol. I'd love to hear your guys stories extra kudos for creatures other than big toes. I have two, both of which occurred fairly recently, not long after my grandfather's passing. The first one was when one of our kitchen lights, which we have never had a problem with before or since went through this weird three-week period of its light bulbs spontaneously burning out just a few days after we put them in. We went through several bulbs, several boxes of bulbs, the same results every time. We even called an electrician to see if there was some sort of power surge going on. He couldn't find any sort of explanation. It was only that light. None of our other appliances had any sort of problem. Then one night, one of the bulbs randomly exploded out of nowhere at like 10 o'clock at night when the light wasn't even on. Now, my mom is a pretty big skeptic, but even she was freaked out by that one. Ever since the explosion, that light has worked normally, no further issues, 
The second one was my dad's telescope randomly falling over when I was home alone. For context, my dad's telescope is big, and very heavy. This fact is important. My parents, coincidentally, were visiting my grandma, my late grandpa's wife. I stayed behind because I had a test due that day that I had completely forgotten about, thanks online course for not notifying me. Anyway, so I'm home alone, mentally kicking myself for my stupid mistake and not being able to go see grandma because of it, when I hear the loudest crash I've ever heard in my life coming from downstairs. It sounded like the front door being slammed open, I thought someone was breaking into the house. I am legitimately terrified. Like, fight or flight response fully activated. I grab my knife, go downstairs, mentally preparing to stab a man if I have to. And my dad's telescope is on the floor. That thing is way too heavy to fall over on its own. There were no open windows, so it couldn't have been the wind, something would have had to have pushed it. But when I searched the house, nobody was there. What was ever creepier was that there were drag marks on the carpet, meaning that the telescope moved at least a few inches along the floor before it tipped. Still freaks me the hell out. Three apartments I've lived in in my lifetime, one, late 90s. I was three when we moved out so these are my mom's stories. The apartment smelled of lilacs, when she used her computer it felt like someone was standing over her watching her. My bio dad always had issues with the apartment, he said it stunk of rot and decay and it was creepy and he couldn't sleep when he stayed over, my mom would hear footsteps above her even when the upstairs apartment was vacant and smell cigarettes in her kitchen, even though she didn't smoke. One time when I was learning to talk I kept saying hi Baba to the wall and waving and my mom said I'm trying to put her to sleep, could you leave us be and I followed whatever it was out of the room with my eyes and then said bye bye Baba. My Baba was very much still alive in the late 90s. One night my mom woke up suddenly and there was a short elderly woman in a nightdress standing in her bedroom doorway with her hair down and she looked at my mom, left the room and went down the hall and my mom heard her footsteps, followed her and she just vanished in the kitchen where the woman had been walking smelled of lilacs. All the doors and windows were locked, too, our apartment we lived in through the 2000s. We've learned since moving out that the house was built in the 1860s and passed from father to son till the 1970s when it was converted into an apartment and a law office. The apartment was the back addition and the upstairs of the original house. My mom would frequently see a man dressed in World War I era clothes skulking around her car in the evenings and if she had to go to the garage at night where the freezer was, he'd be standing in the garage but would vanish into thin air. She also saw him standing by her front door once when we were coming home and it was raining heavily, and once saw him standing behind her in the bathroom mirror. There was also a woman in a blue dress who walked up and down the hallway between my room and my mom's room, in the old part of the house. I remember being afraid to go to the washroom at night because I was afraid of run into the woman. I also once saw her in the living room late at night when I went to the washroom and she told me to go back to bed. When my little brother was 3 or 4 my mom woke up feeling like she was being shaken and a woman saying your son is outside and my mom found my brother had sleepwalked himself downstairs and opened the door and was standing in the open doorway. 3. My first apartment with my husband was in a really run down old house. The rooms we occupied would have originally been a nursery, children's bed chamber and nanny's room. My husband frequently worked till 11 or 12 at night so I was often home alone there at night. I used to order food in a lot and meet the delivery driver down by the road because the house was kind of hard to find, two apartment buildings had been built in front of it and there was a small lane way to get to the house between them. But unless you were looking for the house it looked like from the road the apartments were 19, 23 and 21 was missing. Anyway several times I looked back up at my apartment to see a man standing in the window but my apartment was empty and locked when I came back upstairs. My husband and I would also hear children laughing, doors and cupboards would open and close on their own. When I was home alone late at night it felt like a male presence was standing over me and was upset and angry I was in his space. About 6 months into living there a pipe burst and the damage required one of the original chandelier decoration Pisces and the ceiling to be covered up and the whole time they were doing the reno anytime we were in the hallway there was a vibe like a woman was incredibly angry that her home was being destroyed. Finally we'd frequently see a black cat out of the corner of our eyes but we have two black cats so we just assumed it was one of our boys. Except for when we were moving out we sent our cats to stay with my parents near where we were moving to because our apartment was being shown while we still lived there and the strangers in the apartment was incredibly upsetting to the cats. Anyway that week we were in the apartment without our cats we still kept seeing a black cat. 
I shut him in a kitchen cupboard once, said Sorry Frey, one of ours, opened the cupboard to let him out and as I was opening the cupboard I remembered our cats weren't there anymore. Also the cupboard was empty, other random creepy things. My youngest brother had an imaginary friend called Belvin who stuck around until my brother was like 6 or 7 at least and Belvin would frequently tell my brother to kill us and to do dumb stuff like play with knives and matches and jump out windows and out of cars but my brother knew that he shouldn't do what Belvin said. My Bill had an imaginary friend called Otis who would run alongside their car when they were driving through forests and one time my Mill was playing with glow sticks with him in the bath and he told her mom. Otis is standing right behind you and my mill freaked out and turned the lights on and made him get out of the bath. When my daughter was just learning to laugh she was laughing hysterically at something behind us that we couldn't see and then the next night my husband had a dream where his grandpa Doug told him he had a beautiful baby girl and when my husband woke up the frog plushie that grandpa Doug used to keep on his pool table that we now keep on a bookshelf in the living room was sitting on my husband's chair in the kitchen but I didn't touch it at out bookshelf is glass fronted so it's not like the cats could have carried it off. I don't know why. But my childhood house was haunted even though it wasn't even that old, I think it was like built 4 years beforehand, anyways, the house was just weird. My parents never believed my siblings and I but when we were alone we would see shadows out of the corner of your eye. When watching TV, you could see into the hallway and into the guest bedroom and just always see something there and I remember we always kept the door closed for that reason. One night, I was up for whatever reason probably like 10 or something and my sister suddenly calls my name at like 1 am, we shared a room, and she scared the shd out of me. I answer back and she's all like did you hear that girl crying and I asked what tf does she mean and she says she heard a little girl crying in front of our window, now I'm freaking out because my bed was next to the window and that window faced the front yard so anyone could gain access but the craziest thing was that I didn't hear a thing. I told her to shut up and tried to go to sleep even though it freaked me out. Probably at 3 am, I'm awoken by the same girl crying right outside, I was scared but I just tried my best to ignore it. We discuss it in the morning and we were really hoping it was our little brother. It was a long shot, but we asked him and he said no, it wasn't him. He thought we were the ones crying. And he was on the opposite end of the house and of course my parents didn't hear shit, but one that actually happened directly to me was when I was like 11 twelfths. My parents went to work at 4am slash 6am and they would wake me up to go sleep with my little brother as he had a problem sleeping by himself and would cry when they left. I was fine with it but I would be the first to wake for my siblings to get ready for school. It was probably like 7.40 when my alarm went off and I got up to use the restroom. As I'm sitting up, clear as day I hear a man with the deepest voice ever go don't go, stay with me and I just froze. After a couple minutes I just laid back down and hoped it was over. After my second alarm to wake up my siblings went off, I got up because I didn't hear anything else for 20 minutes, my brother who was right next to me didn't hear anything and neither did my sister. No one in my family has a voice that deep let alone no one in the house could speak like that as we were two 12 year old girls and a 5 year old boy. But I never heard talking after that and we moved when I was 13 years old, we always told my mom about this and she never believed us. Not a single child she believed until one night we all just sat down and talked and she told us how she also felt it but thought we were being dramatic. Until one day, her friend felt the biggest slap on her ass from nothing. Again. No one there. Then my mom starting wondering if maybe we were telling the truth especially since years have passed and we all have it stuck with the same story. Never experienced anything like that again. Once I went with my aunt to visit her husband's grave. He'd been a really nice dude, loved horror movies and playing pranks, this visit was a few years after he died. We're standing there and all of a sudden I feel knocking under my feet. Like the ground is a door someone's knocking on it. I try to act cool even though this continues the whole time. Later that night me and my aunt were having drinks and she just knew, all of a sudden she said what happened at the cemetery, you looked weird? So I told her and we had a good laugh about it because it was absolutely something he'd do. I often have trouble sleeping. It gets to the point that I sometimes go walking my dogs at 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock in the morning and coming home to go back to sleep. I am convinced there is some sort of strange creature living in my quiet country Australian town. So anyways, when I get to the sports ground in my town I usually let my dogs off the leash so they can have a run around free. 
they're violent to other dogs so it's good for them to get out and run around like that. One night I get to the spirits ground and let off my dogs and shone the torch around to see if anyone was around. I looked around and all of a sudden I saw two eyes illuminated by my torch staring back at me from the middle of the oval. This didn't happen at the oval pictured it's just to show you what a footy oval is. At first I thought it was a dog slash cat slash rabbit slash possum but then it stood up. Whatever it was, it was big. I thought maybe it was a kangaroo but it stood way higher than any kangaroo I had seen. Even a red. I couldn't really make out its body cause it was pretty far away. Like I said before, my dogs are mean and violent to other animals. They've been known to take on animals way bigger than themselves like cows and horses but to whatever this thing was, they backed away to me and whimpered. I took them away on the leash and kept walking. We went through a gate and halfway across the second oval. I got that strange feeling something was watching us and turned around to shine the torch. And it was there. It had walked to another gate that led into the same area and was just standing there watching us. It was still too far to make out its body and I was really scared so I just started walking and in 5 minutes I was home. That was about a year ago. It took me a month to work up the nerve to walk the dogs at night again. Last month I was in the same place at the same time with my dogs when I started thinking about the incident. As I was thinking, every dog in the surrounding neighborhood started barking like crazy. My two started whimpering like the first time and all of a sudden a giant bang sounded and something let out a large threatening howl which made all the dogs suddenly stop. As soon as that happened I grabbed the dogs and ran home. I'm convinced there is some sort of strange creature living there. The Warrens visited my childhood home once. A lot of weird stuff happened. Things being thrown. Voices, terrible smells and things like that. One thing that always stands out is when we were younger me and my sister shared a room. Both of our beds were against opposite walls and the heads of the bed were against another wall into corners. So two sides of the bed were walled off. My mom was tidying up and went to grab a Minnie Mouse stuffed animal that was sticking out from under the bed. When she went to pull it out it was pulled back under by something that could not have been possibly pulling it. It was a small game of tug of war until it was violently yanked from whatever was where the wall is. Then a rotting meat smell followed. Another time was, we had a painting of woods hanging in the living room. A path with woods on both sides. And my mom slept on the couch. She looked up and swear she saw Satan or a demon in the background. A priest came to bless the house and take the picture. They tried burning it and the picture itself burned, but the frame wouldn't. I used a Ouija board once and it read out Del Bunny I say hi. It freaked me out a bit but ultimately didn't relate to me so I didn't think much of it. A few days later I was at my parents and I nonchalantly mentioned it and my mom went white and said my dead uncle called me Bunny. When I was about 10 or 12, I went to this camping slash resort place. I won't name the exact place, but I will say it was in New England. In this resort, you rented out a cabin or an RV and you slept in it. The place has a pool and things like that but the majority of the place was forested. The forest wasn't dense, but it was pretty large and you could easily get lost. The day the sighting happened was just, off. Everything just felt weird. Weirdly enough, there wasn't a lot of cicadas or birds singing, even though it was the middle of July. It was like the sky was dead. The fishing was horrible too. Literally no one caught anything. It was like the water was dead as well, pretty boring day. The pool was fun though haha. It got even worse when night hit. Everyone else went to sleep, and I stayed up to watch some TV. After a while, I heard some scurrying outside. I really liked animals at that age, still do, so I went to the window to see whatever critter was romping through the leaves. Needless to say it wasn't a coon or a possum. Whatever this thing was, it wasn't natural at all. This thing was really long and skinny. I guess you could call it spotty dog-like, kinda looked like a greyhound. It was completely hairless. There wasn't even any peach fuzz like a sphinx cat, its face was the worst part. It was like the mix of a wolf and a baboon. Its eyes were just black marbles. It stared at me through the window. It was crouching then, it looked like it was digging through the dirt. After a few minutes it stood up. It was bipedal, like a person. The thing must have been like 7 feet tall, it was huge. It ran away after that. I woke up the next morning. I thought that I dreamt the whole thing. I went outside to where I saw the thing. The leaves were disturbed and there was a bare spot of dirt. I never saw that thing again. Anyone know what this can be? Edit. Just notice that I didn't explain the cryptid's appearance that well. I'll give some basic descriptions. 7 feet tall. Deep. 
completely black yet shiny eyes. Kinda reminded me of that vent black material L, really long arms. Almost at the ankle of the beast, human slash ape like hands, but with dog like fingers. No nails, but did have claws, white body. Like albino Y, dog slash human like legs and feet, no visible genitals. So this story is something my mother told me, when my sister was a baby, my mother had to take her with her to the DMV one winter. This was the Midwest, so the DMV was quite a ways away. While they're driving in the middle of nowhere the car dies. Now, this is the Midwest during winter. Temperature was a balmy 5 f there was a snowstorm with strong wind so visibility was low, and even if you could see there was nothing but corn and soy fields for miles. My mother is quietly panicking, thinking that she and my baby sister were about to freeze to death. Then in the rearview mirror she sees a figure. There is a man, on foot, approaching the car. He walks up to my mother's window and asks her if she needs help. He looks under her hood for about 5 minutes, and the car starts again. The man then just turned and disappeared into the snowstorm. My mother had the car driving down the road seconds later and never saw any man or any buildings he might have gone into. There was absolutely no reason for a man like that to be walking in the middle of a snowstorm, fix a car with no tools provided, and then disappear. My mother maintains to this day that that man must have been a guardian angel. My best friend and I liked to do a lot of ghost hunting and I was sleeping over at their house one weekend. We were sitting in their room and I started to play Careless Whisper by George Michael on my kazoo. We both laughed about it a little. About 10 minutes later, the TV in their room turned on by itself to the Careless Whisper music video. I will never hear that song the same way. I don't have a specific story I'd like to share but I would like to call out a great show on called Missing 411, The Hunted. It's currently on Amazon Prime. The whole show is super interesting but the part I want to call out, that had the hair on the back of my neck standing up, was right after they did a segment on disappearances outside of Sonora, California, the fun begins around the 1 hour and 12 minute mark. In this part, they provide evidence, that can't be faked, of something no one can explain and to me seems like a possible interdimensional portal. Whatever it is, I highly recommend. Enjoy. I once woke up suddenly with sleep paralysis. It felt like someone jumped on me and I had an immense weight on my chest. I was also being choked. To top it off, I felt like I was being molested. Like someone was slapping my genitals around. I just remembered suffocating an intense shame. Almost as soon as it started, about 10 to 20 seconds, I could feel the pressure relieve and I rolled over, my throat felt less compressed and I could breathe. I was awake the entire time and could see with my eyes but could not move until I was released. It never happened again. But it was very real. When I was about 14, my grandmother had given me this little gold necklace with a cross on it and told me never to take it off. I wore it for at least 12 straight years without taking it off, but one day finally decided to and then it got lost. So by this time I'm in my 20s and my brother and I were living together. One night we stayed up late playing with a Ouija board. Nothing significant happened during the game, but we started talking about our deceased grandmother and I told him about the necklace and how I was sad that I had lost it. At this point it was missing for a couple of years and I had moved twice. Anyway we eventually decided to call it a night, I go to my room to get into bed but first I was digging through my backpack looking for something, and I find the necklace in there in the front pocket plain as day. It made no sense. I got really excited so I went to tell my brother, who also thought it was eerie, then we proceed to get back to getting to bed, as I'm laying in my bed about to drift off, feeling content about finding the necklace, I hear a very loud bang on my door as if a full grown man had punched it. It scared the absolute shd out of me. I thought maybe it was my brother so went to check, but when I opened the door no one was there. I checked his room and he was sound asleep. No idea or theory if the Ouija board, necklace and bang are related in any way. But it was a weird night to say the least. When I was young, I used to have extremely vivid night terrors. I would dream about things like war and people having their heads lopped off. I would wake up scared from these and sneak into my parents bed. I remember one night, I was about 7, I had crawled up into my mom's side of the bed. It was a water bed, so as to not wake her up. I was scooched all the way at the edge, practically hanging off the side. I looked down and from the space from underneath and at the back of the bed, where the electrical components were housed, a small train came rolling out. 
There was a tiny conductor that waved at me and the train continued across the room and disappeared into the closet. It's been nearly 40 years since the night and I still remember the details like it happened yesterday. I was 5 when this happened and to this day I can't explain it. I was 5 years old and hated sleeping in my bed so I slept with my parents. I asked and they said sure knowing how much I hate the fact that my parents house is right next to a graveyard. A few hours later and I woke up. Though something felt off. It was as if my face was too close to the ceiling. This next part I kid you not, something gently floated me down into my parents bed. I was 5 at the time and didn't care because I had to use the bathroom. To this day I still wondered what was going on that night. When I was 18, 2008, a friend and I took a road trip from Northern California to International Falls, Minnesota. It was a long drive and we were broke, so we tried to make it as fast as possible. Our goal was two days to make the 2015 mile drive. Toward the end of day two, we had been driving for about 20 hours and had about two left. We were in the middle of nowhere at about 2 am when we saw this bright blue light way off in the distance. We thought somebody had been pulled over or something, kinda looked like blue police lights and really bright. The light seemed impossibly far though and took forever for us to come across. When we got to the light, it wasn't a car, there was a woman standing in the middle of a creek with some crazy bright blue light all around her. She was just standing there, in the middle of nowhere, in far northern Minnesota. It was the most bizarre thing I had ever seen, the light seemed to be emanating from her. It freaked us out so we just hurried away. We didn't talk about it the rest of the trip and eventually lost contact. I messaged him about it a couple of years back because it had always stuck with me and wanted to make sure it wasn't a dream. Turns out he remembered the same thing and said he wished he forgot. I looked into it further and turns out a flood had washed away a small town a bunch of years ago and resulted in many people dying. We're not the only ones to see what we saw that night. My band teacher told me this story for Halloween. He needed to technically test us on our audience skills. He was working a mom and pop movie theater and he was closing up. He locked the front door, shut down the machines. And then he went on to check all the movie seating areas because they have had problems with homeless people sleeping there. He heard a noise as he was checking the last seating area from above where they had the projector. So he walked up the stairs and as he was walking up he said look dude, I'm 6 feet 3 inches A and 360 pounds you might want to get out while I want to let you out. He opened up the door and there was nobody there. All of a sudden the lights went out. He took out his flashlight and walked down the stairs and to the light switch. He flipped the switch a few times but the light stayed off, all of a sudden there was a loud crash coming from the projector area he was just at. He ran up to check that area and literally everything that was on the table in there, projectors, films, etc., was on the floor. He turned around and around trying to find the guy that did that. He saw an odd glow coming from the entrance down the hallway. He ran to the entrance and the odd glow was gone. Just then, the lights flicked back on. He went back to put all of the items back on the table from the projector room, but when he got there everything was back on the table. He then ran out of the building and drove home as fast as he could. A few days later, the place was closed down by the health inspector for an odd goozing from the walls. Posted these in a different thread, but I have a few things that I can't particularly explain. For context, I live in a terraced house with my mom, couple of years ago the drain in the garden was blocked. We kept a ladle next to it after my dad used it to clear out the drain and after that we didn't particularly fancy using it in cooking. Mom came home from work one day and thanked me for getting round to cleaning the drain, only problem was I hadn't. Yet the ladle had been used and there was a load of gunk laying round next to it, we're the middle of a 5 terrace block, so for anyone to get into the garden it requires hopping over a few fences. The drain is also at the side between the conservatory and the fence so not really a thing you randomly stumble across fence hopping. Asked my neighbor if she slash someone had cleared it, we get on super well so it would have definitely been a thank you for that situation, but she had no knowledge of it. This happened a couple of years ago as well, in the conservatory we have battery activated birds that tweet if someone causes a big vibration, clapping hands loudly next to it, jumping up and down next to it etc they're not that sensitive and never go off by themselves. Apart from one night where they went off four times over the space of a few hours, my mom and I were in bed and the cats were up with me, so none of us could have caused this. There was no weird seismic activity going on, I checked, and it's never happened before or after. Batteries are still going strong so it wasn't that either. In my room I have a letter F that is battery operated and lights up. 
Last year I lost my keys a week or so before the incident, didn't have a clue where they were. Went to bed as usual, woke up at 5 am with the F light on and my keys were underneath, I haven't had history of sleepwalking and, like the above, nothing similar has happened before or after and it's still the same battery and it works just fine. Mum was on holiday last September, I was at work, got a parcel and the delivery company sent me an email saying it was in my safe space, the porch. Came home from work, parcel wasn't there, went inside and there it was sitting by the stairs. Only rational thing here I can attribute is that I didn't close the door properly and after taking the picture the delivery man decided to plonk it inside. I've never not closed the door properly before or after, left this one off my previous list as I'd sort of brushed it off. This happened about a week ago. I was on my bed playing online poker, not very well I had in a room with a window open, but a blackout blind pulled down in front of it and my door closed. I have a bookcase which lays against the wall and with its side sideways to the window, so not great for blowing things off. I have a thick heavy book on poker, as I was playing my losing streak it fell off of the bookshelf. I have a ton of non-poker stuff on the bookshelf and that was the only book that had moved. Rationally there was somehow a breeze or a vibration that caused it to jump off, but that was weird. I've also got a couple of bump in the night things. This one was about 6 years ago, I was playing on the PlayStation when I heard someone scraping against my door. Presumed it was my mom trying to scare me, told her to go away. She called up from downstairs asking if that was me, this was maybe 6 months ago. I was downstairs making midnight toast when something thudded twice against the door between the living room and the dining room slash kitchen. Presumed it was my cat trying to get in, the sound was like something throwing itself at the door, so in this case, presumably a cat, went to the door and there was no cat there, raced upstairs and both cats are sound asleep in the corner of a room. Logically it was one of them and the race is up and settled for the night, but that was speedy as heck if it wasn't completely out of character. I've mentioned these before to a few people, they always stop believing me when I mention about the delivery appearing inside. I genuinely promise the above have all genuinely happened, outing that point across because, frankly, I wouldn't believe someone telling me the above, whilst it would be nice to think there's a cool entity doing random tasks and helping me out, I'm sure there's a rational explanation for the above, although quite frankly I'm worried about the rational one for the drain. If anyone has any ideas, let me know. North Dakota is weird, about 12 years ago when I was a sophomore in college I lived in the campus apartments for athletes. It was technically Easter break. My sport was already done for the season, but my roomies were basketball players and they were still playing. I lived across the country and couldn't afford to fly home for the break so I just stayed on campus. Most of the athletes went home, well we lived on the bottom floor of a two-story apartment. It was just one of roommates and I staying on campus for the break. The rest of the apartments were empty except for our house mom who lived across the hall from us. We were hanging out in our living room watching movies one evening and heard a loud boom in the apartment above us. We didn't think ghost, we first thought someone was breaking in. This was during the oil boom in North Dakota and people have tried to break in quite frequently, sadly that's not the scary part. So we walked outside and walked around the whole building and never saw a light on or anything unusual. We continued our movie. A few minutes later we heard loud running steps, legitimately there had to be someone upstairs running. So we went and woke up her house mom. She didn't like us and thought we were drunk. We were surprisingly sober. We explained to her what we heard and she shrugged. Then all of a sudden a loud thump, like someone knocked the fridge over. All three of us went upstairs and she opened the door. Nothing. Literally nothing was amiss. Our house mom appeared a little creeped out but ultimately decided there was nothing wrong. So she went back to bed and we went back to our apartment. Our movie was almost over and then we heard the sound of basketballs being dribbled above us. We were both so freaked out, me and my 6 feet 5 inches roommate ended up sharing a college sized twin bed for the night. Never happened again except for that night. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.